Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is the last Monday in January. Can you believe it? I, heard, I, I really can't. <laughs> February is literally only a couple of days away. It seems like the year was slipping by already. So it is Monday. So that means I am casting on a brand new project this week, you guys. And it is not a baby net. I saw somebody ask me somewhere, Instagram, Facebook, about the about the project, and they said, this going to be a baby net, but I didn't have a chance to answer you. I'm so sorry, but it is not a baby net. This is going to be a knit for me. I know last week I had talked about that I had uh, started a baby knit, and I was all excited about baby knits, and I was, well, I do have a lot planned for baby knits, but this is not a baby knit project. This is a project for me because February is always sweater month. We do, over on the Fiber Friends podcast, we do a month-long sweater challenge or challenge or just a knitting project. You can pick whatever you want and uh, submit it for prizes. And here on the Wildflower Wool channel, we do a two-week sweater knitting challenge. Jocelyn and I starting that on February 9th. It's a Thursday night. And we go for two weeks, and you guys are more than welcome to join us to do a two-week sweater knitting challenge. You can use any weight of yarn. Go super bulky if you want. If you're really daring, try fingering weight or worsted. Jocelyn and I are both doing worsted weight this year, which has me a little bit concerned. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I thought since basically this is February, I should be casting on a sweater. So the yarn that you guys were voting on, I picked the yarn for the project this week and we have seen this yarn, I don't know, a couple of times before. I've talked about this a few times before and this is yarn that is direct from Peru. So for, hi everybody, I see everybody's chatting in the, in the chat, that's great. Um, so if anybody hasn't seen this yarn before, this is yarn that my sister-in-law's mother brought back for me pre-COVID. So I don't know, four years ago, maybe she was on vacation in Peru and somehow came across the yarn shop and she brought this super bulky yarn back for me. It's, there's no tags on it. So I'm assuming it is a hundred percent wool. It's kind of a thick and thin spin, spun wool. Really, really pretty. Um, a little bit of a pick to it, but not not super scratchy. It is it is nice. So um, I have I think I have seven of these skeins. So no tags. So I have no idea what the yardage is, what the weight is. I mean, I could weigh it. I could figure that out on my own, but. Um, I don't really know. So I asked you guys to vote today for shrug or a vest because I'm going to be a little short on yarn. So this is going to have to be something I think knit top down, maybe cropped. I can't even <laughs> believe I'm going to say that. And uh, a couple of you have got super great memories because in the past I have also chatted about my, my thoughts on vests. I don't really wear, well, I don't wear vests. I always wear cardigans. And so one or two people said, Louise, knit a shrug, you never wear vests. <laughs> but... I thought maybe that's time to change that. So I thought I would give you guys the option, shrug vest, what do you think for this super bulky, kind of thick and thin yarn? There's some different, there's one that's a little thicker, there it's a little thinner. Some places, the odd place, it's even thinner than that. So I think it'll knit up nice, However, it gets knit up. Oh, hi, Diane. Um, sweater, two weeks sweater, and now shrug vest. Mickey, shaking my head. Well, you know, I thought because, of, you know, if a vest is the winning item, it 
doesn't really count as a Fiber Friends sweater project. I mean, it could. It's a garment. It doesn't have sleeves, but, you know, <laughs> we can bend the rules a little bit, right? And then I thought, I took a quick look on Ravelry once I found out what you guys had voted for. And I was like, oh. Now I really, I thought some, I was, I thought for sure I knew what was going to be the winning cast on project. You guys surprised me. So I had to do a quick little ravel research. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? So anyways, should I tell you what is the winning project? What is the winning project? Let's see. So shrug and vest were the options. There, like I said, some people said, don't do a vest, you don't wear a vest. Other people said, because of the new grandbaby coming. A couple of people said, do the, um, do the shrug. So then you can have, you know, you can snuggle with the baby. I think it was Jocelyn said, do the vest. Then you could, I don't, I could like kind of tuck the baby in and then just snuggle with the baby with the vest on. So, I mean, both, both would work just fine with a brand new baby. Um, both will be a quick knit, super chunky yarn is leaning towards a quick knit. I think Liz has given me the drum roll, which is my cue to tell you what I am casting on tonight and the winning. Look at this. Daisy's here already for the win. Okay, you guys, you guys voted for it. I am casting on a vest. I thought for sure a shrug would win. I had to count every last vote because it was almost tied. On Instagram stories, um, shrug was ahead by one vote. It was super, super close. Then Instagram post comments Shrug was ahead by hmm, a, a couple. Went to Facebook. Facebook was totally opposite. Facebook was almost all Vess. So in the end, Vest it is, ladies. So I am excited. This is my year. You know, I haven't didn't really make a lot, well, none really, <laughs> New Year's resolutions. I have some goals, things I would like to work on. It's kind of like I'm done saying I'm going to have a finished project. I'm also not going to say I have any New Year's resolutions because that is just like jinxing myself. So I have some things that I'm going to work on. And I thought, you know what, this is going to be the year of some change, doing something different. And, you know, I'm going to be wild and crazy and I'm going to knit myself a vest. <laughs> Doesn't seem super crazy, but for me, that is going totally out of my comfort zone. But I'm picturing, I don't know, a vest that I'm going to love and I'm going to wear. And I know Liz is saying, do not say the F word. I know, no F words around here at all. So this is going to be, it's going to be a cute little vest, you guys. So I did take a quick look on Ravelry because honestly, all day long, I was thinking I was going to be casting on a shrug. And so I kind of had some ideas of what I wanted it to look like and what I would do, blah, blah, blah. Well, literally at seven minutes to eight, I was counting the votes and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a vest. <laughs> I have no idea what, well, I mean, I guess I, I didn't until I, I stopped for a second thought about it. I thought, okay, well, basically can just do a, base, a sweater without sleeves, right? Could be easy. I did a quick Ravel research and Petite Knits pattern came up. Holiday Slipover, I think is what it was. And it had a high neckline. It wasn't a turtleneck, but more just a rounded collar. And it had a slit at the hem on either side. Looks like the back was a little bit longer than the front. It looked really cute. It had deep armholes, which is nice because I think, like I said, I'm going to be, I'm thinking tight for yarn. So 
um, deeper armholes that'll use a little bit less yarn. So I think that'll that'll work in my favor. It looked really cute, and I'm hoping if I actually knit from a pattern, her pattern should be fine. You guys, the last two times. I have tried to knit from somebody else's pattern. It has been a disaster. So the mitts, the drops pattern. <laughs> How many times do you want to hear me talk about that? So that didn't was a no-go. And I think back the end of December, I had you guys vote on a pattern. It was a little twisted stitch or cabled pattern. I was going to make Eric a hat for Christmas using that pattern and I cast it on and I didn't get much farther than the ribbing and I thought this is ridiculous. The stitch count was way wrong. It was huge. So I pulled it out and did something different. <laughs> so I'm like, and then I did those mitts and they didn't work out following the pattern. And I thought, oh, this is why I just like to do my own thing. I make my patterns up as I go. Most of the time they fit. Most of the time I'm happy with them. But I thought for this vest, Petite knits. I mean, she's such a good designer. There should be absolutely no problem with her pattern. I would I would think if there was any pattern, if any problem while I was following her pattern, it would probably be because I did not read it correctly and uh, mucked it up all on my own. So anyways, I'm thinking that, but that's the first pattern I looked at. But, you know, honestly, it's just plain, but it's, it's knit. I'm thinking but the same way. It said super bulky. She had an Aran and a lace weight held together on a nine millimeter needle, which I'm thinking is what I'm going to do with this. So I am, I think I'm just going to go by her pattern and follow it and it'll be a super quick knit. Like I'm thinking it probably could be done in a weekend. <laughs> Done does it isn't an F word, right? It's not that doesn't mean the same thing. I'm not going to jinx myself by saying done, am I? Um, so I'm going to give it a try. So I'm thinking that maybe this will be, I don't know. Well, it's kind of almost. Oh, it's a garment, not exactly a sweater, but it'll it'll be one of my cast ons for sweater month for the Fiber Friends podcast. But I'm thinking if I can truly, truly get this done in a weekend. And then I will just cast something else on. Because why not? I'm all excited about sweater month. I love sweater month. I love February for sweater month. Can't wait. Can't wait. So I'm going to wind this up. I think I'm just going to wind this up tonight. Put something on Netflix. Just watch some more. Oh, what am I watching? Firefly Lane. I have only watched a couple of episodes of season two. So maybe I'll put on an episode of that. And just sit and wind these guys up into cakes and get that job done. And then I can uh, find my needle. Actually, I know where my needle is. My 9 millimeter needle, I know where it is. I'll probably have to find a 7, I think, for the ribbing. And I will be set to go on this project. Oh, I'm super, super excited. Can't wait. So, guys, thank you for voting for a vest. This is Look at this. I'm I'm embracing this change, doing what I normally don't do, and we'll see. Let me report back as I'm knitting it, how it's going, when I actually get it finished and I wear it. Then we'll see how my exciting, you know, do something different turns out. What if I come back and I say, oh my gosh, I love this vest. It's super cute. I can like take some pictures, I can model it. And, or I'll be like, oh my God, why do I do this, right? Just stick with my cardigans. <laughs> we will see. But I'm, I'm having a feeling, I'm excited for the vest. I want to try it. I want to wear it. I want, I want to like it. So I think that's half the battle. So it should be, it should be great. Super excited. I like the color. The stuff's been in my stash for so long. It came all the way from Peru. Mary Lee was so nice to bring it back for me. I have to get this knit this month so I can wear it. So that's the plan. It's going to happen and it's it's going to be finished, you guys. I know I shouldn't say it, but it is. It's going to be finished so I can wear it and the summer of spring is is the plan. Okay, so I see everybody is saying like congratulations, good job Sam. So Sam, did you Sam to get more dishcloths done? I'm guessing. I finished Oh, I finished four dishcloths and started my fifth dishcloth today. 
Fantastic, Sam. So how is everybody else? I haven't been looking at all in the chat. I have just been chatting away. Um, I will go back and scroll through some comments. Oh, I see. Okay, wait, I will look at this. Um, Jocelyn is saying, best are so handy, keeps your core warm with no sleeves. You don't get overly warm. Something you did it. Yes. Okay, so yes. Keeps you warm without getting too warm. And that I may actually be happy for. I made that I may may be happy with that. <laughs> Susanna says, Louise, you do it to keep us entertained and enabled. <laughs> there. Well, I like to try. Keep you entertained for sure. If I can enable you to cast on something, it makes me even happier. So I have some finishes, you guys. So we were just chatting about the mitts. I don't think I had these finished. I don't think I did have these finished last week, did I? I wanted to, but I didn't. I was close. I think I was just one thumb short, wasn't I? Well, I finished them. I finished them and yes, I have them on the right hand. So these are fantastic, you guys. I love these mitts. Love them. The yarn. Do I have a ball band? Do I have a ball band? You know, a prepared podcaster would have a ball band. Um, and I don't think I do. Anyways, it is uh, Drops Wish. Um, I will just have to explain it to you. Drops Wish, it is a blend of Merino. Super it must be superwash merino, I think. Superwash merino, alpaca, and cotton. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. I haven't looked at the ball band, but I know it is mer it's I'm sure it's merino. No, it's alpaca and some cotton. I think the cotton is the core that the alpaca and merino are spun around. Very, very fluffy, very, very warm, and I think very very soft i i never thought there was any pick to this at all and on my hands like there's no itchiness to them i don't find at all i gave a couple people the ball to hold on to before i started knitting them and they practically dropped it because they like think they're like, <laughs> they don't wear wool they have they have they have problems wearing wool so if you're really super sensitive they, this may still be a little bit too rusticy for you, but overall, I think it feels wonderful. Love the yarn. Would definitely buy it again. I've been wearing these mitts since Thursday. Sam, do you remember if I had them at Knitting Club finished? I think I did. So I think I've been wearing them Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I know I wore them all weekend. And... So far, there's really, okay, so there's the back of one mitt. So that's really, that's not going to get much wear and tear. So that's what it looks like. And there's the palm. So a little more felting on this one, but not a crazy amount. And to be honest, I've been being really rough with them when I've been wearing them. Well, I've worn them out a few times in the snow. One night, it was super super cold yes yes sherry alpaca, alpaca will felt yes it will um so i was like doing this a lot trying to rub my hands and keep them warm so i have been doing this more really than normal mitts probably would have um i've been driving with them i've been carrying bags i've been carrying grocery bags so really, I'm happy with these because I was really, really worried that I would wear them once and then they would just look really, really terrible. But they're holding up okay. And, you know, and if they get a bit felted or bally, I'll just, you know, use a gleaner on them and uh, and just tidy them up. But overall, love them. Super warm. They're soft. They're squishy. Love the yarn. 
don't knit with the pattern. But um, so the pattern that I used the drops pattern, I just did a quick search drops um, wish. And there was a mitten pattern came up. I think it was um, friendship mitts. I don't know. There was a few pattern. A few people had knitted and posted it on Ravelry. I didn't read all their comments, but they finished it. They probably weren't <laughs> saying nasty words like I was. So I don't know. The pattern did not work for me. Did not fit. Was way too small. So I pulled it all out. And well, I pulled it back to the ribbing. Their instructions for the ribbing were wonderful. The rest of the mitt did not fit my hand. Did not work. So I just did. Just kind of made something up. Did a basic mitten pattern. Some really, really simple shaping up at the top and love them. So I would follow my little makeshift pattern again and uh, make more mitts like this. And I would definitely buy the yarn again. So that's that. And a finish, which I will mark on my whiteboard here. So finish. Finish. And I love them. They're like, it's a win-win all the way around. I also have another finish, but I have tails to cut off, but I don't think that matters as far as if it's a finish or not. Okay, my mosaic cowl. This is what it turned out like, you guys. So I did put the mustard on it. So all of, all of my projects seem to have stories with them. So I started out doing this beautiful mosaic pattern because January for the Fiber Friends was mo mosaic month. And the whole plan was to do this all the way around in a nice long cowl. And then I promptly ran out of yarn after this much. Went back to Little Red Mitten and these colors have been discontinued. How is that possible when they look so gorgeous together? Anyways. I two finishes don't uh don't expect that again for a really long time so anyways and I know there was a lot of comments we were chatting about this we've chatted about it here on Monday nights Saturdays on the Fiber Friends podcast and I know we've had a lot of comments like people said oh just add do some blue with it make it short I don't know maybe in the end I maybe should have just I should have just finished it and made it a short cowl, but I don't know, you guys. I had it in my head. I wanted something that wrapped around. So, anyways, that's what I did. Went down to Little Red Mitten. Jillian and uh, Jolyn, we were looking through the yarn. So this is Sans Garn, um, Pure Gint. It is a DK. And, hold on. I do have a ball band here just because I just finished it and haven't had a chance to misplace it yet. So there it is. And uh, it's it's lovely. It is lovely wool. It's 100% Norwegian wool. Lovely to knit with. And um, so we were looking at shades to go with this. I was trying to think if I would color block it. I was looking for two more shades of blue. I was looking for two more shades of gray. And there wasn't anything that really, I don't know. I couldn't find two sets of colors that I liked. There was a dark, there was a dark navy that I pulled out with the mustard to go together. And then in the end, um, Jillian was just like, why don't you just do a garter stitch section and then just have this as your front and call it done. I'm like, oh, that is a really good idea. So what I did was this had the blue mosaic. That's where I cast on. It had that red yarn in it as, as waste holding my um, stitches because I did a crocheted provisional cast on and knit all the way up to here and then I just added the dark mustard on. I knew from you know years and years of experience that garter stitch is was going to be a lot stretchier than the mosaic because the mosaic even though it's garter has those slip stitches which make it a little firmer. So what I did was I immediately on my first row 
I knit two together and knit two together and did maybe about four rows and then I could just see the muster just starting to widen out a little bit so I just on the next row I knit two more together and and now it just it's the exact same width so and then I just garter stitched it two more balls two more 50 gram balls into here and then just did um, grafted it for um, garter stitch super super easy the only thing you have to watch when you graft garter stitch is you have to make sure you end with the correct row when you're looking at it when you've got your wrong sides together on this side you want a so your front side and back side front side you want to have your pearl bumps on the last row facing you and then on this side you want like what is the knit side of your garter stitch facing you and then when you kitchener stitch it together it just forms seamless garter stitch if you had pearl bumps and pearl bumps on this side you'd get a little bit of a a ditch kind of thing it wouldn't it wouldn't uh um it wouldn't be completely seamless so if, if that's the case you just knit one more row on this side or pull one row out and then you and then you graft it together and the grafting is really easy you just you still have to do your setup row you just do a pearl and a pearl on the front and leave it on a pearl on the back leave it on and then you come to the front and you do a knit and off pearl and on go to the back and repeat it knit and off pearl and on and it's the same just do those two on both the front and the back Kitch or kitchener stitch with stock net you know you have to flip it around garter stitch is a little easier okay so I saw somebody ask can we see it on so I would so I finished these are wove in but I didn't have scissors with me when I when I wove them in so I still have some tails on here and then it started snowing today and it was you know kind of, it was kind of chilly so I wore it <laughs> with the tails and uh, I just made sure that I tucked them in or at least had them to the back so because the mosaic really would have gone around I can just kind of do this so you just see the mosaic from the front and then the mustard can kind of peek through on the inside look at who needs to weave in tails look at that and then I like this so it's nice and snug and cozy and then you get this is nice and high you could I mean you could tuck it in if you wanted it a little smaller you could fold it over tuck it into your coat I like it oh Nikki thanks thanks Diane um oh Susie says I love the stitch pattern and tried to order the book but it wasn't available but I did order Oh, oh, the um, the Barbara Walter Walker, <laughs> Barbara Walker. Um, yes. Oh, it wasn't available. Oh, see, I wonder if they're. Hmm. I know they were available. Well, a few years ago, because I had a friend who, um, ordered all of them, the whole series. So maybe something to look at. You know, if you're ever around used bookstores, then if you can find them, because she's got. Uh, she was. Um, she was like an Elizabeth Zimmerman, Barbara Walker, and uh, she uh, has got great, great, great patterns. Um, oh, Susie, it was the red cover book, yes. And, uh, okay, so I wonder what the Barbara Clark one is. Well, it'll be interesting to see what it is. But, yeah, so mosaic knitting, this has been a fun month of mosaic knitting for sure. And I've got a nice, warm, cozy cowl. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, yes, I do. I do like the idea. I mean, when I was, I had debated about making it bigger. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I don't, I like it. 
I'm happy and I wore it today. So win-win. Even though my blues don't match, well, they kind of almost do, don't they? Really, the dark blue? Not really. Nope, they don't. But <laughs> I think on the screen, this looks more navy than it is in real life. It's it's like a bright robin's egg blue, really. But that's all right. I don't know. That's always one of my goals, to start making cowls and mitts that match, you know, from the same yarn. But it never works out that way. I always end up with mis mis mismatched stuff, but that's all right. Because I like them both, and they were super warm, and they were great on a snowy day today. So that's it. That's it for finishes. I started last week's New Start Monday was a baby knit. You guys. I mean, I know this is going to surprise nobody, right? This countdown to when the baby arrives is just going to be like a whole repeat of Christmas Eve knitting for me. I know. I know it is. But I'm trying hard to uh, to not um, let that happen. Okay. I'm telling you guys, so this bag is on my needle crafts bag. And... I have everything. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, I didn't even show that. That looks terribly messy, doesn't it? But I do. I have everything in here. This ends up being, it ends up being like my purse. Everything gets stuck in there. I have a huge paper clip in here. This must have been marking a pattern at one time, and it's still in here. I mean, like, really, sunglasses. But there is a knitting project in here that I want to show you. So, baby sweater from last week. I decided that I have gotten. Okay, maybe I really should clean out the knitting bag. Okay, there's another extra couple needles that are getting caught in my actual project. Okay, baby knits. Okay, I think I have to take this off. Um, or at least loosen it because it was getting warm. Baby vertebrae. That was the pattern that we had talked about last week and that cute little shrug pattern. So I've got it started. So what I ended up doing, for some reason, I was having trouble buying the baby vertebrae pattern. So when I went and looked on Ravelry, the newborn size is free. So I downloaded that one. And then I tried to purchase the baby, which I think the baby has a few different sizes in it, like maybe up to um, two years old, if I'm remembering right. And anyways, it didn't work. I had, I had some technical problems I don't know I, I I tried to purchase it and then hit thought I hit all the buttons and then I went out and did some errands and came back and it's or I think I got an email and it said your purchase didn't go through and I'm like oh that's really weird um so anyways I tried it again and this time when I went on Ravelry I took I looked a closer look and there's an ebook that you can get that has the baby vertebrae which was what I wanted and then it also has another pattern for a kid's vertebrae um so it was only a couple of dollars more to do the two patterns together so really that was a no-brainer so I thought okay that was good that my first transaction didn't go through so then I tried doing the ebook um this morning and it didn't go through so I don't know Anyways, I'm going to try it again. Maybe I just was in a spot where the back, there was a bad internet connection. I'm not sure. But anyways, so <laughs> that is my idea because I'm thinking that I'm going to really love this pattern and we'll just knit, you know, every, every size as she grows into them. So what I'm working from right now is just the newborn size but I'm using heavier yarn and larger needles. So I'm thinking that I'm going to get something in between newborn and three months, which should be perfect 
newborn size, <laughs> right? A larger newborn size. Does that make sense? I think so, right? So here it is. So the yarn, Anchor Bay, Cascade Yarns, Anchor Bay. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? This is, we were calling it lilac because on the ball band, there's no color colorway. But once I started knitting with it, I loved it so much that I went on to Little Red Mittens website and I was looking at all the colors that they had because I was thinking like, ooh, I think I need this color and this color and this color and this color and this color, like basically all of them. And um, anyways, on the website, they have color names and this one was called lavender it was um something like <laughs> there was something else as some descriptive word like i must say smoky lavender but that i don't think that makes sense does it um light lavender dark lavender it was it was a lavender there was a different purple that was more purple purple and it was maybe called a dark lavender so this is this is the lighter lavender and um Oh, so I'm reading. Diane, is that for Sam? Big difference in numbers. Oh, if there isn't a border. Okay. Anyways. So anyways, um, this is a lavender shade. So I'm knitting it on a four millimeter needle. And right now I just have it on a 16 inch. I'm going to have to bump it up to a longer cord, I think because I'm getting close to the ends and I still have some more increasing here on the raglan shaping. But look how tiny this is, you guys. Oh my goodness. Like there's, so it's just a little shrug. There's not much of a front on it at all. Like the front just, just comes down the sides and there's just a few stitches here for the front. And, um, then this is the start of a sleeve. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I still have some more increasing to go, but oh my goodness, it's going to be so tiny and so cute. So there it is. Well, we're upside down, of course, but there. So that'll be the neck. And then it's just going to be so, so cute. I know it's just so tiny. And let me tell you, when you're looking at the pattern, I was showing it to somebody today. It was on the Ravelry page. And of course, they have little tiny babies, newborns, close to newborns, wearing this little sweater. And they're all sleeping and they're like, like just leaning on somebody's, like mom's or dad's chest. And it's like, oh my goodness. It is, I feel like, <laughs> it is just so, so cute. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we are on the countdown weeks away till we are going to have a little baby to snuggle like oh my goodness I can't even tell you how excited I am <laughs> about that so I'm going to have a few little sweaters ready for her to wear when um so I must you know if this ends up being too small that's okay we'll just whip up another one because they are not going to take very long at all so that is my just my little start on here and the yarn is lovely I did have trouble and you can see right here it does split a little bit um, I noticed that one I didn't fix because I thought it's right where the I'm gonna pick up something for a collar here so we're not gonna notice it but a couple of times I did have to kind of go back and pick up where I had split the plies. So that's, um, <laughs> are you making fun of my stitch mark? Are you talking about my stitch mar markers, Anne? <laughs> um, so anyway, so it does split a little bit, but the yarn overall is really nice. It's really soft. It is 50% cotton, 50% superwash merino. So it is, it is nice. It is, uh, <laughs> um, it is washable. So, and they, the gauge on here is that you, they're, they're calling it either a worsted or a DK, depending on your gauge. Really though, I'd say it's like a DK. 
it is fine. Like as soon as you pick it up to knit with it, it feels finer than a worsted. Um, you guys, stop making fun of my stitch markers. This is called <laughs> using what you have in a pinch. Um, I didn't have my little notions pouch with me and I started to cast on and I had to mark where my increases were going to be so I had to get inventive so this red as you will recall was the red that was my provisional cast on for my scarf <laughs> so they work perfectly fine they are nice and brightly colored <laughs> Now, mind you, I did have to pull back one row because I forgot to do increases. I just just zoomed right past my lovely and stylish stitch markers. But, yeah, they work in a pinch. <gasps> oh, a baby Musselberg. That would be cute. Oh, Nikki, you've done that before. <laughs> Used all sorts of things. Exactly. <gasps> oh. You, what is that? Your engagement ring. Well, I have put, I've, I've used earrings before, little hoops that I've had. I've used paper clips. I've like gone through the console of my car trying to find whatever I've had. And that's probably where either I found the earrings or the paper clips. I know you get inventive when you have to. Have you guys seriously never made your own stitch markers just out of yarn? I'm sure you have, right? Cheryl brought your stitch markers to my attention. Cheryl, are you making fun of my fancy stitch markers? <laughs> I know. Well, they work in a pinch. I was going to. I did briefly think before we started chatting tonight that I should look and find some pretty ones that all match. But I didn't. <laughs> Maybe I will now. Now that you're all making fun of my stitch markers. No, I won't because it's really not bothering me at all. <laughs> um, Sam, I, Sam, I haven't read hardly any comments. I think I've read three comments the whole night. Um, they're awesome. Well, of course they're awesome and they work fantastic. <laughs> twist tie. Oh, twist ties from bread. That would totally work too. I have never used those, Kim. That is awesome idea. Oh, Cheryl, done that many times, of course, right? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, stitch markers, like, they come, they go, they're in the bottom of the couch, in the bottom of your project bag, right? You can never find them or have enough when you want them. Oh, my cowl again? Okay. Da, da, da. So here it is. In the beautiful mustard, I know some people were not shy in saying mustard would not have been their first choice and that's fine everybody's entitled to their opinion and i know mustard is not everybody's go-to color but i like it so yeah so and don't laugh at this cheryl they're they are wove in but i i didn't have scissors and i didn't have even nail clippers or something to and like you know, um, and it was not breaking it with my hand because that's just hard on my hands. So I do, I just have to cut them off. So, yes, yeah, so Cheryl missed this the first time. So it's nice because I can have this doubled up right snug around my neck. And then I can just turn this, have the mosaic out here. Pretend that's all snipped off. I can either leave it open, can tuck it in, and it's lovely. And I wore it this afternoon, Cheryl. Or actually, to, well, today I wore it because it was snowy and, and well, wintry. <laughs> I needed to wear my, my cowl and my mitts. Now I just, oh, Nikki, I have been wearing your hat, actually would look great with my cowl. Hold on, because I know I have it right here. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Sorry, you heard all that. I knew I knew Nikki's hat was here because I had it because uh, I've been wearing it all weekend. So look at my blues again. Don't quite match, do they? But you guys, if you haven't seen this hat, this is Nikki's design, Christmas Chronicles two beanie, fantastic pattern. If you're looking for something that's got cables and is a fun knit. Go grab this pattern. So look, I've got like how many shades of blue here and none of them match. <laughs> but close enough. Close enough, right? Anyways, so that is, this is going to be my winter ensemble for the next, well, probably till the end of this winter because it is all about sweaters now. Sweaters and vests. Um, so. Yes, all the blues, a pop of mustard. That's right. Why just stick with one shade when you can just wear them all, right? <laughs> 50 shades of blue. That's that's right. That's right. Getting close to that. Yes. All right. So, oh my gosh, you guys, that is what I've been working on. So, let me see. Tonight's plan. I've got to wind up all this yarn. I'm going to find my needles. I'm going to cast on. I think I'm going to go grab the um, that petite knits vest pattern and just knit from there. Sometimes it's nice. I like just knitting from somebody else's pattern because then you don't have to stop and think about stitch counts and figuring out, measuring, and all that kind of thing. So, and I think her patterns should be pretty reliable. So I think I will do that and see how it goes. And then work on this cute little baby knit. Super excited. So the baby shower is only, it's a few weeks away. So the baby, yeah, so anyways, yeah, the baby shower is middle of February. So I have to have something finished. So I think this will be a cute little baby shower gift. And then I'll see what else I work on in between the sweaters and sock madness starts. Oh my gosh. Countdown two days until sock madness signups happen. That's going to be a momentous day. I'm going to wake up that day. That's going to be the first thing I think about. have to wake up a little extra early, see if the registration forms are out and I can do that even before I go to work. <laughs> Oh my gosh, February is going to be an amazing month, you guys. Sweaters, sock madness, baby knits. Going to be so much fun. Oh my gosh, I should I should update my whiteboard, but I cannot reach it. So I will add in, I don't think I even put on, I did not. I have to add on the baby knit from last week. I'll add on the vest for this week. I'll mark two finishes <laughs> and then that will be January's projects all on the whiteboard and then I'll go into Ravelry because I don't think I've done Ravelry for a couple of weeks either. So, oh, so did you, was it a Walker? Oh, did I say the wrong name? Barbara Walker. No, I'm confused about what I said to Sal or Susie. Anyways, Barbara Walker. Um, let's see. So, anyways, what are you guys working on? Is anybody close to a finish? Are you guys figuring out what your sweaters are going to be? Who all is knitting sweaters this month? Anybody gonna do the two-week challenge with Jocelyn and I? So this Thursday, Jocelyn and I will be chatting here. 7 30 and it is going to kick off I think five weeks five Thursday nights in a row Jocelyn and I will be chatting so this coming Thursday night is is our check-in because it's February holy smokes that means I'm yes <laughs> we're checking in Thursday night Jocelyn are you ready do you have your projects worked on? Um, so Thursday night, Jocelyn and I do our check-in. Did we meet our goals? Did we not? Did we work on them? Did we get totally sidetracked? We will see. And 
Then the following Thursday is the start of the two week sweater knitting challenge. The following Thursday after that is just our midway through the two week sweater challenge check in just to see where we are. Are we kind of halfway? How are things going? Have we had any problems? And then the fall, the next Thursday is the grand reveal of our two week sweater. Did we get it finished? Were we close? Did we throw in the towel? Because <laughs> we're both doing worsted weight sweaters. Jocelyn last year came like this close to finishing a worsted weight sweater in two weeks. Like so close. I'm a little more nervous for me. <laughs> Everybody should be nervous for me. The last two years, I have done a chunky weight sweater in two weeks with breathing room. I think even last year, one year, I think it was last year, I actually pulled out my cuffs because I didn't like them and I re-knit them and I still had time. So now maybe that little bit of extra time, I will need every minute of that with a worsted weight sweater. We will see. We will see. Um, if it gets finished, it gets finished. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it'll be really, really super close. And it will be fun to have tried. So we will see what happens. But yes, sweater knitting is very, very close to starting. And then somewhere in that whole mix of sweater knitting, Sock Madness will kick off too. And I also have to knit a baby blanket. But that's okay, because I can fit it all in somehow, some way. <laughs> it will all get done. It will all get done. So, oh, yes, so I just I just looked back here at some of the comments, and Sally said, I voted shrug because you said you wouldn't wear a vest. I know. So, oh, and you said wild and crazy would be crocheting. You're right. That would be wild and crazy for me. Oh, yes. Yes, Diane, did you guys all see Diane's skirt knit with the um, crochet granny squares around the bottom? Looks super, super cute, Diane. You were so in style with crochet. Yeah, that's lovely. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I'm just going to scroll, just kind of see what everybody is. Sam did her dish class. Everybody is super excited. <laughs> oh, Anne's saying, is it best quicker for you to knit than socks? Probably. Except, yeah, I don't know. I can't say that. Nope, because I got to be super speedy. For Sock Madness socks, they have to be quick. I can't can't be slow with those. Yes, I know. I need to get some socks done for Sock Madness. I know. I may just have to pull out some needles out of some a sock. That's not very far along. <laughs> oh, yes. Anyways, I'm just kind of scrolling through comments. Oh, that's right, Diane. You always said about doing fingerless mitts. Then you can knit while I'm wearing the mitts. That would be good. That would be a good a good use of fingerless mitts for sure. And oh, Susie. Oh, Sam. I can honestly say, it. oh, you have a lot of mistakes in mosaic dishcloth, but I figured I wasn't going to learn if you didn't try. Exactly. And it's a dishcloth, right? And you know what? And I noticed. I was sitting here and I was looking at my at mine and can I see it now? I know where it right there. Now that I've seen it once, I can pick it out. But it's I don't know, it's not a big deal. So see this cross? It's supposed to have light has light blue all the way across, has light blue on the top. My light blue here is covered. It's under there, but I did I had the my dark blue. Um, strand. I should have moved it. Well, I moved it to the wrong side, whatever side I was on. So it's crossed here and that strand should have been on the back. But really, is anybody going to notice that? No. And yeah, whatever, right? <laughs> when, it, when you're wearing it, you're like never ever going to see it. So and you could duplicate stitch over it. I think somebody who somebody here said that, and you totally could if I wanted to. I could go in with the light blue, and I could duplicate stitch over it. But I am not that worried. But one little, 
one little strand being in the wrong spot is it's fine. Um, so anyways, okay, I'm just going to scroll back down here and see. Oh, that's right. Let's say, yeah, she better know them really well if they get that close. Yeah, if they're that close inspecting my scarf, there's going to be a problem. Oh, Susanna, I saw it. Yes, I will. You said some. I saw something about check your email. So I will go check that. Oh, Autumn, how are you? My yarn already caked. In. Oh my gosh, you were doing the two week challenge with us. Fantastic. What sweater are you going to work on, Jude? You accidentally will be finished with my planned February sweater by the <laughs> weekend. You were just too excited. And um, did you, you start it early? <laughs> or is it like super, super bulky and just going to be um, done? Start it Wednesday, done by the weekend? That could happen. Nikki, you're spinning for the throwback. That's right. And you're knitting that mosaic shawl right. Sherry, all I want to see are itty bitty baby knits. I know, I know. Is oh, I didn't show you this. I think I showed this Saturday on the Fiber Friends, but if you didn't catch a Saturday, I came home with this skein of yarn too. And I know, and I know, I, the lilac and pink. And I, I, these are the two colors I was not going to buy. I was going to get yellow. I was going to get orange. I was going to get a nice bright green, gray, navy, red, even a shade of red. I thought, you know, I don't want to do traditional girly colors, right? But, oh, my gosh, I couldn't, I couldn't resist this. It's upside down. It is lichen and lace, and it's a superwash merino, and it's called... Sweet pea. If I didn't like the color, the name gets me every time. And I thought, oh, this would be so sweet. And I, I showed it to Anita and she really, really liked it. So I thought, okay, that's going to be a little something too. Another little sweater. And then I think the next things I'm going to get are not going to be pink. They're going to be going to expand the color palette here a little bit. So. Um, oh, Sally's asking, what yarn are you using for your sweater? So, my two-week sweater challenge, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think I know, but I couldn't find it yesterday when I was doing some looking for it. So, I've got to do a little more looking, and hopefully I will come across it. I mean, I know where it is. I just have to find it. And... Then I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do one of my gauge to garment sweaters again. And uh, haven't thought anything more than that about it yet. But I will have to soon because that is coming up quick. Probably, the, well, this coming weekend, I will definitely put uh, a little more thought into it. Uh, let's see. Oh, Jocelyn, tonight you're working on an everyday slouchy hat for my niece's boyfriend. Oh, it's his birthday. Right. Nice. Am I taking vacation days? I don't think I am going to. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. There's a, some chance I might, but I don't, I don't think so. So uh, it's going to have to all be done during evenings. Oh, Autumn. Okay, it's going to be your first time knitting in Tarja. That is exciting. That is fun. Oh, Ambo O'Brien. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, Susanna, you've got a sweater that you started last year, so you can finish it. Perfect. Okay, Sam, what is this? Louise, I wrote some comments for you. I need your help with the other mosaic pattern. Um, okay, well, sure, I can try and help you, Sam, but I would say just do exactly what we did with the cat one. If it is it the moose, just do the exact same thing we did with the cat and just knit from the chart. Oh, oh, Jude, you are speedy. Okay, what is this? Worsted weight. 
Started Saturday. Crocheted. Completed. Oh, complete with modified sleeve. Not a fan of. Oh, okay. Not a fan of balloon sleeves. And you're going to be done. Oh, my goodness. Jude, you are super, super fast. That's amazing. You'll be able to make another one. <laughs> I know, Sweet Pea. I know, really? And it's the name. I just, yeah, had to have it. Oh, you've intrigued Susie now. Yes. Oh, Sam, you started not to like mosaic. I'm getting so frustrated with this other mosaic. Which pattern? Is it the moose or is it something different, Sam? Oh, Jude, that's right. Yes. Pocket cardigan by Crochet with Carrie. Oh, well, there you go, you guys. That would be a great project to work on this month. Sure, put it in put it in the um, Fiber Friends group, Jude, if you want, because maybe somebody else will want to whip that up in like a week. You're even tempting me, and I don't even crochet. <laughs> Oh, so that's exciting. Well, okay, everybody. Well, we are at our hour mark, everybody. This has been lovely chatting with you all. I think I'm going to head out. I am going to put something on Netflix, get my ball winder out. My Swift is already set up because it just like is a permanent fixture. And um, yeah, I think I'll use the ball winder for this chunky yarn and start winding it up so I can get this cast on. And then I'm gonna work a little bit more on this sweater because I just can't stop. Um, <laughs> Sam, you wrote a question about, oh, early about the mosaic. I did not see it, Sam. Yes, Jocelyn, I will see you Thursday with our goal knitting projects. That'll be fun. We will chat. Yes, well, I'll be back the Thursday night with Jocelyn. Saturday, Cheryl and I will be back on the Fiber Friends. And then we'll be back here on Monday night. So almost like every other night, you guys can grab your knitting. And we can just have a little chit-chat and a little knit night. Be a fun way to work through this week. So everybody, thanks so much for voting. A vest, you guys. This is going to be exciting. Fingers crossed we'll come back with what I... What I think next week on my vest knitting. Well, hopefully the yardage on this will uh, work in my favor. Hopefully it won't be like the scarf and run short because I don't know what will happen if I do. Um, anyways. Oh, yes. The Rebel Mystery Knit Along. I've got that on my needles too. Hmm. I have to work on that. Well, no, that'll be later in the spring project. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for voting. Thanks for chatting and hanging out with us here tonight. It's been tons and tons of fun. Have a great knitting week, and we will chat to you later. Happy knitting, everybody.